Marcus, I'm going to ask you a question, and I've got to tell you why I'm going to ask the question. The question is, how important is lighting commissioning? And the reason I'm asking it is, 10 years ago, no one was talking about it, and it is becoming more and more of an issue on every job I work on now. So what do you think about that? Well, in the world of commissioning, when people hear lighting, they automatically think energy, right? They automatically think, you know, reduction of energy, right? But, you know, in reality, it really comes down to safety. It comes down to basically lighting, you know, the hallways, the egress, everything. But it also comes down to architectural beautification. Lighting is so important for architecture. I mean, you know, it's always like when you when you take a picture of something, like, I captured the light, you know, I got the light, you know, everybody wants to get married in light. You know what I mean? It's just like, come to the light. So the thing about it is it's very important and it's very, very expensive. People like understand that everybody, like you can walk into a room, like how many people have walked into like a new hotel and you're like, Oh my God, you see these beautiful lights and this and that you're like, Whoop! you see the chandelier. I mean, millions upon millions of dollars for basically yeah. lighting elements. Right. And, I love light. I'm a big proponent of light. That's why I'm talking about lighting right here. So it's one of those things where whenever I get on a job and I'm going to be commissioning and lights come up, right? I take it very serious. Okay. A lot of people are like, oh, it's lights at the end. No, start with the design in the beginning. Start looking at it. Like, I'm not going to judge the design. I'm not going to do that. But when it puts a sensor into a room and it's over here, you're like, is that the right height? Can people go through it? FF and E got to be involved. Is there a dresser too high? Is the T stat too low? Will it hit the room? Because you know, as soon as like you don't see it and you look at this like sensitivity with, you know, infrared, different motion sensors, you know, sound, you know, there's so many different parts where you're looking at occupancies and pieces of like that. That's one part, right? Then let's look at another part, the control, you know, component of it. Like, you know, which, which lighting control system to go with? I'm not going to go into that because I mean, I have better luck with some than others. Right. But then it's also down like who's going to procure it, who's going to put it in, when it's going to come. Is it there? Is it not? I mean, remember, at the end of the day, it's a light. Right. OK. It basically it gets put in, it gets powered, it gets burned, it gets energized. It turns on, hopefully. OK. But then you have to have control of it and all the little, you know, sensors and all this different time zones and all. this. You know, it's just like a building automation system control. It is. It's a control system. It depends on does the owner have a static port? Is there a graphic to it? Is there not? How are they going to check it? Can they control it? You know, are they walking by with a little laser? Can we put it in test mode? Some can't, some can. I mean, it's havoc, everybody. Havoc, right? But you got to make sure they're working. And then, of course, you're like, okay, is it is it is it not just working properly for like the lighting, but is it saving the energy? Is it doing this? Do we have all the meters working? Oh my God, meters, right? The meters that go in, you know, all the different versions of meters. I'm not going to say names, right? The light CTs, the this, the that, the ropes, the big ones, the small ones. Can they fit it on basically the old conduit? You know, the legs coming in, is it 480, 277? My God, POE. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. You got to learn all the stuff. You got to like just eat it all in and go, oh, right? But at the end of the day, just base, break it down to basics. But it is amazing with BAS, we're like, I need a point to point. I need a checkout. Lighting, they're like, you need what? Like you could say point to point to lighting person, right sitting in the same room as a BAS, they'd be like, what's a point to point? Because there's different types of checkouts that they do. And nothing, nothing, there's some very complicated systems that you can do full reports on. You can see exactly what each each room has, I want to see lighting. I want to see basically scenes. I want to see percentages. I want to basically break down everything to make sure that million dollar system was actually installed correctly, is working. Remember though, it all comes down to one thing. When you're working with a good controls person, lighting controls person, contractor, if you guys have a good team together, man, you can make that thing just rock. But if you have any problem, they're like, no, pay more, pay more. I've had lighting contractors and lighting companies that just hold you hostage and pay me more. And if I don't have a computer there, I cannot see what's going on. There's, we can go on and on. My, my experience is, I think this is all an emergent property of complexity, right? Back in the day, you turn the switch on, you turn the switch off, light comes on, light comes off, right? So you're right. Lighting is important. It's a, it's a major factor in IEQ, sets the mood. Uh, it's a comfort factor. Right, it's an I EQ, factor. not I EQ. That's air quality yeah, versus I EQ. Yeah, and it's a comfort factor. It's an energy factor, right? And in the past, like back fifteen years ago, everyone goes, "Oh, I'm 
doing an energy audit, I've changed the bulbs to more efficient. You can see yeah. that in your electricity. Been there, done that. Yeah, everyone's done that now. That's over, everybody. Let's just be clear. Now, there's two aspects to it. There's the lighting, and then there's the lighting control, right? So there's another level. So there's the lighting, outside light, inside light, and then dark sky initiatives keeping the light down, right? That's one design factor and testing factor. And then there's the lighting control. And this is where it starts getting complicated, right? So then you need a control system. That control system needs testing in different scenarios. Then it, that control system needs to interface with the BAS system and other systems. That lighting control system might interface with a facade shading system where they work together, right? Now, then it starts getting, you need integration, you need design teams working together, you need specialists working together. And this is where the commissioning person comes in and tries to knit that together. So <clears throat> I think it is important because it's a big energy factor. And I think it really, really falls under the commissioning and the management of commissioning to get this whole thing pulled together and integrated with the BAS and any facade systems. Um, and at the moment, the industry doesn't really quite recognize that need, would you say? Well, I, I think that they recognize it, but at the same time, it, there are so many pieces going on right now. Yeah. And so, for instance, like, okay, Anybody in the in the light industry, it, they'll be like, "Oh, is it a dolly?" And you're like, "You're like dolly, D A L I, right?" So I pull these things up all the time. Digital addressable lighting interface, right? It is a two way communications protocol that is used to provide control over and communication between the components in a lighting system, right? There are so many different little pieces, and everyone knows that when you get out there, you're like, "Oh, I've had this dolly driver fail, that one fail, this one fail, this one," fail. and you're like, "Wait a minute, so." This entire zone is controlled by that over here, over here. It failed. So all this failed. So wait, what about task lighting? What about like walkway lighting? What about ambient lighting? Wait, what about controllable lighting? Because remember, remember when people start doing big zones and I'm sitting there working on my computer and someone's like, my lights are too bright. Okay, well, it's part of their zone. Well, I don't like this. So you really have to, like if you're going to design lighting for people not just like for beautifulness, right? For like, you know, the walls and this and this and, you know, scenes. But if you're actually doing it for work and if their light is not how they want it right next to someone in their little, you know, section of the world, they're mad. You go into a little room where it doesn't properly come on. Remember, it goes on 50% for code, goes off, goes here. Oh my Lord. It just goes on and on. And daylight harvesting, for God's sakes. Like if you don't program it right, it won't come on right. It won't dim right. And there's code values like, it is to the point now where you got to satisfy the intent, you got to satisfy code, and it is, and, and you got to satisfy basically the energy savings. It's and it's prescriptive, but it's also performance based because it goes into the energy model. Like I know I'm talking like Greek to most people on the call right now, but it just goes on and on and on. And if you actually don't sit there and work with the team from the beginning till the end, you are not going to have fun when you turn over something that. See, is this not... is the complexity factor, right? You know, this, yeah. this, like, you know, you got zones going out. You know, that's a fact. That's a complexity leads to to fragility and failure points, right? You know, one control, one inter controller for the whole zone goes down. All the lights go out in that zone, right? You have a lot of stakeholders involved with lighting. Yeah. You have a lot of stakeholders. It, it doesn't matter if it's a parking garage. It doesn't matter if they're daisy yeah. chained. It doesn't matter if you come around floor number one. They all turn on when they shouldn't. They should be broken up. Well, as a commissioning provider, you should be able to say, what is it you're really trying to do? What's the intent? Like, yeah. do you want to save energy? I mean, do you really have to dim an outside light that's on during the day? Do you really have to have rope lights that are basically dimmed during the day on the stairs during the day? Like, you, you know, how many people know on this call, like you walk, go to any large campus yeah. and like, you're like, oh, wait, hold on. It's 12 o'clock noon. And that large sign right there with that light on middle of the day, like, like it's everybody's like, save energy. Come on, man. You know what I mean? It's just like, it, it shouldn't be that difficult. right? It shouldn't be this hard to turn off a damn light during the day. But again, it's a lack of attention to detail and a lack of design intent, right? 
people don't seem to realize when you add up all the lights and the intent and the design mm -hmm. and all of a sudden like save energy, right? I mean, how many people can on this call right now can say you drive by a large building at night, like three o'clock in the morning and 75% of all the lights are on in the building. And you're like, let's see, let's add them all up. Oh, that's right. That was a thousand dollar night. But when we had that in Toronto when they have International Earth Day and they're supposed to dim, take all the lights out and you look downtown, all the lights are on. And it was in the newspaper and the one landlord said, we just don't know how to turn them off. But, you know, the worst so thing these is... these are on 24-7, right? Well, people say, put an occupancy sensor in. So basically you're sitting there yeah. and all of a sudden it's in the wrong area. So you're sitting there at night. Oh, how many people have been in the bathroom? Like, you know, going to the bathroom and the lights shut off and they're way over there and you're like, I'm in here. And yeah. you're like stuck in the dark and you're like phone on and you're like awkward. You know, that, that kind of situation should never occur, but it's in the wrong place. So yeah, you know, the answer is really, you know, how important is lighting commission? It's really important <laughs> because it can directly affect the occupant experience, right? Oh, and it pays for itself. Yeah. Honestly, lighting commissioning, you know, for the little amount of money we're paying it, because it's usually like bundled together, yeah. right? It, uh, Three months, six months. I mean, if and, and and lighting, it's just like the first thing you see is like, do the lights work? And do I have Wi-Fi? I mean, outside of that, I mean, you're good to go. You know? Yeah. So the answer to these problems we've been talking about is you have to really be intentional from design onwards in how this thing is going to be put together and tested and made just less fragile, right? Get back to the basics. Everybody's yeah. got to sit down with the drawing set, draw it out, color code the zones, Color code the occupancy sensors, color code basically the daylight harvesting, color code the lines that you have in your area of your 120 or 360s or 180, your views. Like, remember, be careful when you put a glass door in because lasers like to bounce backwards. You know what I mean? <laughs> or if you walk through a hallway and all the lights come on, issue, sensitivity, angle. I had know. that on a job. That was oh, hilarious. God, yeah. <laughs> and all they do is, you know, the owner just wants to go, rah, you know, and you're going, rah, you know what no, I mean? So it's like, the answer here is yes, it's important. And anyone working on a job right now and lighting commission is not in a commissioning plan, send that plan back and get it put in. Designers, contractors, owners work together when it says installed by licensed contractors or da 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 da. Everybody's got to check the placement. Everybody's got to be responsible for is it in the right place? Is it seeing what it should be doing? Is the room, every room, every light, every life matters?